Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 157. On Now You Know. Sponsored, as always, by our amazing Patreons that are there for us to make sure that we can put the show out to you every week. And we're sponsored by our friends at the Solar Powered Hotels in Schaumburg, Illinois, the Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott, and the Town Place Suite Hotel, which is right next door. They are both solar powered, and they both have EV charging. And as Amazon Associates, we earn from qualifying purchases. So you can find that affiliate link down in the links below. And brought to you as always by ecoware.us. We carbon offset the manufacture, shipping, and life cycle of your purchase, and we plant a tree for every order. So it's carbon negative. That's right. As you know, we planted over 300 trees so far. Thanks, guys. All right, Jesse, you've been on the show for a while. Mm -hmm. you, you know everything there is to know about EVs, yeah. I think. Um, so I think it's time for you to take a pop quiz. Ready? Yes. All right. Do you believe that electric cars still run on gasoline? Yes. Do you, okay. Uh, do you think that electric cars have towing capacity? Uh, no. All right, uh, let's go for an easy one. Do electric cars work in hot or cold conditions? Uh, they, they do not work. They do not work in hot or cold conditions, no. Okay, so I guess the only good news out of this whole thing is that you answered basically the way most Americans have answered this quiz. This was a quiz given out by Ford uh -huh. to find out if their customers truly understand electric cars and basically most of them failed. So 42% of Americans said they believe that electric cars still run on gasoline. 42% of Americans. Okay. 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 67% said that electric vehicles have no towing capacity. And 80% said electric vehicles don't work in hot or cold conditions. <sighs> okay. So all jokes aside, I think that this is, uh, this is definitely an important indicator because... Um, if you're watching the show, and this is not your first show, I think that you're pretty well aware how blatantly obvious all of these things are. If right. you have had any interaction with an electric vehicle before, you you've basically have learned these things. Why did so many Americans get it wrong? It's because most Americans have never experienced an electric car before, and the only electric car that they have ever really heard of besides Tesla, and Tesla's in its own weird category where they're like, it's... It's like a rich person's car, so I'm not even going to think about it, um, is, an, is a Nissan Leaf. That's the only car that everyone knows was electric because they gave it a name called Leaf, and they made it look like this when it first came out. Right. And so they thought, oh, that is what all electric cars are. They are small batteried, uh, low power, you know, they're just for the hippies, and that's all they think about them. I drove a Leaf for two years. And I love it. It's a great car, but it is not a car for everyone. And it is not the kind of car that you can just be like, check it out. EVs, they're, they're the, the future. People are going to go like, I don't, I don't know, man. Yeah. Like, you really have to be committed to this. On the other hand, you have Tesla. Just about any Tesla you can find, put anyone in that car and they're going to go, oh, Oh, I get it. It's doable. It's livable. You're like, oh, I, I see that I have a range, but it's enough range for me to go to work and back and then to the grocery store and then to the hairstylist and then, you know, wherever else I need to go that day, come home, plug in. Next morning, it's fully charged. And as we're going to see in the Patreon bonus stories, Ford is working really hard right now to educate customers on EVs because they're actually going to get, start getting into that business. Yes. All right. So we've talked about this many times on the show about Jeffrey Don. He's one of Tesla's most senior battery researchers. Now, according to Electrek, Don and his lab have released test results on a new lithium ion battery chemistry that includes a next gen single crystal nickel manganese cobalt oxide cathode and a new advanced electrolyte. Now, why is that big news? So I think it's because the, the flux capacitor gives it more range for the the flux capacitor, the, the, quad, the quad reducer, the flux capacitor. I don't know. I mean, what? I don't, what, what am I supposed to do with single crystal nickel magnes cobalt oxide cathode? Yeah, no, I know. That's, that's, that, that's the kind of word soup that goes into my ears and my head goes, I don't want to, I don't want to hear this. Well, this was in the report. Don said, we conclude that cells of this type should be able to power an electric vehicle for over 1.6 million kilometers. That's 1 million miles and last at least two decades in grid energy storage. So I think the key takeaway there is the one million miles part. That's huge. Okay, so whatever scientific wizardry 
they've been doing over at Tesla has been able to give a one million mile battery. This is, I mean, that's amazing. A million mile battery. Right. That's, uh, I mean, Im imagine making a million mile engine on yeah. a car, like where you don't have to touch it. You don't have to replace any of the bits well, or the that's bobs. Well, that's it. the Tesla motor right now. Right. I mean, that's true. Right. The motors can, can last a million miles. If you had the battery last a million miles, there's not too much else you need to replace. There's the tires, yeah. the windshield wiper fluid. And probably the seats are going to wear out long before that. <laughs> the steering right. wheel and the, and the gas pedal. No, I mean, this is falling into Elon's plan. I mean, he wants a million-mile car because a robo-taxi is the kind of car that's going to have to go about a million miles during its 11-year lifetime. So, I mean, I think we were talking, I think it was on the Patreon bonus story the other day, we were talking about how Ford was saying that they were going to be crushing cars like every three years because oh, they were just going to rack wear up the out. mileage and yeah. it would be worn out and you need to crush them. Make new cars. Yeah, it's not the way Tesla's thinking about it. No, they want cars to last. Long-lasting cars. They last longer than the cars last today, and they're going to be doing a million miles. Now, here's kind of a sad story. This is about something that doesn't last very long at all. Plastic water bottles. Uh, Reuters did a fantastic job in this latest graphic of visualizing plastic bottle waste. Okay, so what we're seeing here is a graphic of a uh, trash truck to give you some sense of scale. And you see all those water bottles that are just raining down mm. on it. Those are just wasted plastic bottles. After you're done drinking them, you just toss them out, right? Even if you throw them in the recycle bin, right. they're just being tossed wow. out. So every day, that's how many water bottles are being wasted? Uh, no, that's just in the last 10 seconds. Wait, so that's like a real time. This is real time. Like if you took all the water bottles and instead of going into a trash can, if they went through some kind of like portal and right. emerged above a trash truck, that's what it would look like? Yes. Now, to give you some scale, let's see what it would look like uh, every hour. So this pile here would be higher than Rio de Janeiro's Christ the Redeemer every hour. That's how many plastic water bottles. But I know what you're saying. An hour. Uh, what about every day? Right? Right. Yeah, yeah. 1.3 billion bottles, the equivalent of a bottle pile half the size of the Eiffel Tower in Paris, is sold around the world every day. 1.3 billion water bottles. Yeah. Oh, but you're asking about a month now? In a day. Here's a month. 40 billion bottles. Uh, that's the Eiffel Tower there. It looks dwarfed next to the mountain of bottles that have accumulated. Oh, and you're, what? You're asking about a year? A year's worth? Okay. 2018. 481 billion bottles higher than the world's tallest building. There are only... Oh, but wait, you're asking how many bottles would it look like if we did the past 10 years? Here's that. Four trillion bottles worldwide since 2009. That would tower above New York's Manhattan Island. I've been alive for 10 years. Most of the time you see these things and it's like, well, this is what's been happening for the last few hundred years. And you're like, wow, that's a big thing. This is the last 10 years. Yeah. And it's the size of a of a geography. And this is just plastic water bottles. I'm not talking about all plastic waste. Just and the water bottles. Just the water bottles. And you might be thinking, well, you know what? I don't care, Zach and Jesse, because I put mine in the recycle bin. Take a look at this graphic. Uh huh. So this is the fate of all plastic around the world for the past 65 years. So that is 8.3 billion tons of plastic. Now, you might be looking at this like, I don't know how to read this graph. Okay, the top big portion of the graph there, that is what's discarded after a single use. So 4.6 billion tons, just you use it, whatever it is, water bottle, whatever, toss it, gone. And it ends up discarded, uh, landfill. So it's just... Or in the ocean. Oh, so it's just sitting somewhere. Sitting somewhere. Somewhere it's just sitting there. Sitting there. Now... At the very bottom, you've got plastic that's still in use. That's 2.5 billion tons of plastic that's still being used. Right, because you might not think about this because you think plastic and you think plastic bottles, but like there are a lot of components. You know, think of the light switch covers on your house. Chances are they're plastic, right. and chances are they're going to be there on your house for a pretty long time until right. you until you know we go back to the faders or the big switches or whatever. Exactly. Okay, so this graph just doesn't take into account recycling. Oh, no, it's there. Uh, look really closely. Right in the middle there is a little green line. Yeah. That says that 500 million tons have been recycled. And that's it. That's 6% um, of all the plastic that's ever been made. 500 million tons has been recycled yep. out of the 8.3 billion tons that has been made since 1950. Yeah. So that's good. I mean, 500 million. I mean, sure, it's not It's not the 8.3 billion, but it's something. Oh, no, 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 but follow along the line after it's been recycled. Yeah, see, why is it Some not... of it goes to incinerators. Some of it uh, is still in use, and that's only 100 million tons. The rest what? of it goes and is discarded. So... Only 20% of that recycled gets actually uh, recycled into reuse. 
and the rest of it just gets discarded. This is, okay. Yeah. There are solutions to this, and they're not that hard. Mm. We've talked about it on the show. If we were to tax virgin plastic so that it was better to recycle it, so that it actually saved you money to use recycled plastic, I'm sure everyone would want to do that. But instead, virgin plastic's cheaper. So all we have to do is change the tax policy. And that's just one solution that yep. we that we pulled out of our hat. Yep. It was just one idea that we came up with on a whim. There are many other solutions, which, whether it's switching to bioplastics, which can degrade over time, albeit slowly, but less slowly than regular plastics. There's lots of other solutions, but we need one solution. We need a solution, maybe many solutions. We need solutions. <laughs> We can't just keep doing this. Remember a couple weeks ago, we talked about Solar Foods. They're a company that's making food out of thin air. Yeah, out of air and solar power. And, yep, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, yep, things that you get in air. It's the air. And water, right. Right. That's what I said. When we reported it, it sounded too good to be true. So I reached out to the CEO of the company, and we got an interview with them, Dr. Pasi Vanika. So take a look at a little excerpt here. Dr. Vanika, thank you for being with me. Can you explain, how does your company make food out of thin air? One of the background, key backgrounds, what we had here is that uh, myself, as as the co-founder, uh, now CTO in Solar Foods, uh, Dr. Juha Pekka Pitkan, and we were scientists uh, in, in our National Research Institute. Uh, myself, I was in charge of a single largest renewable energy research program what we had in, uh, in our National Research Institute. That corresponds to something like NREL in the U.S. Um, and we had two key findings. One was that electricity is the new primary energy. So if we want to make a carbon neutral future for the energy system, um, electricity is the new primary energy, whether it's nuclear or renewables, but you need to electrify transport, heating, cooling, industrial processes instead of burning. And in this kind of future, then you have a, uh, we had another finding, which was that if you leave fossils in the ground, you need coal, uh, leave coal, oil and gas in the ground, uh, you could replace this carbon from materials and fuels, even medicine, by, by capturing carbon dioxide from the air, and actually we made fuels from the air as well. But it was a major finding after these two things, and it kind of depressing uh, uh, for me to find out that even if we w- would do all this, install all the technologies that we were researching and, and, and reinvesting a whole energy system, uh, it's not good enough to comply with the Paris Climate Accord or, or what the IPCC is declaring we would need to do or change the things, what, what is basically happening in the Amazon now, now that there seems to be some burns around because uh, about one quarter of the greenhouse gas footprint due human action is due to what we eat and not from the energy sector at all. So with this background, it's quite easy to understand that we thought that you're allowed to have air and electricity and could you turn that for example instead of fuels which is a simple molecule to something very complex like proteins and amino acids and you could do that you have had a solution for that and a very convenient a factory to to produce this is actually a living cell. This guy's legit. This is really happening in Finland right now. They are making food out of thin air. And we've got a whole interview that you can check out with him. It's coming out on Thursday on the show. So if you're interested at all about making food out of thin air, I urge you to watch it. So our next story is about agrivoltaics. Uh, Weren't we just talking about solar food? I mean, agri meaning you know, agriculture and voltaics, meaning solar power. So solar powered food, that's uh, solar foods, right? It is. It's kind of, it's combining solar and food, making food in the same thing. So it is a lot like solar foods. So this is a little bit different. New research out of the University of Arizona shows that plants and PV solar systems get along really well. They're friends with each other. Kind of. So you're saying that they go play down by the creek together? What? No, no, they don't play down the c- creek together. But check this out. Uh, it's called agrivoltaics. It's solar sharing. So Greg Baron Gafford, he's an associate professor in the School of Geography and Development and lead author of a paper that was just published last week in Nature Sustainability. He said, we found that many of our food crops do better in the shade of solar panels because they are spared from the direct sun. In fact, total Chiltzipin fruit production was three times greater under PV panels in an agrivoltaic system and tomato production was twice as great okay wait wait wait. so i thought that you needed the the plants to be in the sun like the sun and what you're saying is you're going to put these plants in the shade underneath solar panels and they're going to grow more food some plants like shade don't like the direct sun okay 
yeah, check this out. You may be saying, you know, why is this even important, right? right. I mean, why do we need it? Because often PV solar systems get pushed to the edges of cities where we typically have the space to grow food. Agrivoltaics may allow us to use limited space for two important uses, food production and energy. Now you get a whole lot of cool benefits here. Mm -hmm. You get less watering because of higher soil moisture. You get warmer temperatures at night, about half a degree Celsius. You get higher humidity levels under the panels. And with the cooler temperatures that that higher humidity brings, you get cooler temperatures for the plants because mm -hmm. obviously you're not in direct sun. So that's about a degree Celsius cooler. And the cooler temps for the solar panels, nine degrees Celsius cooler because of the humidity from the plants, which means that you get more efficient solar panels because as we know, solar panels are more efficient when they're colder. And as Greg said, all told, that is a win-win-win in terms of bettering on how we grow our food, utilize our precious water resources, and produce renewable energy. Okay, okay, so give me, give me a second here. You're saying you can double, and in some cases triple, food production in the same area. You can have more efficient solar panels, and everything seems to like that. Yeah, not only that, when you have to go pick that food, yeah. instead of being out in the hot sun, if you're picking it under solar panels, your skin temperature is going to be on average 18 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius less than traditional agriculture. So as Gary Nabon, an agroecologist and co-author of the paper says, climate change is already disrupting food production and farm worker health in Arizona. The southwestern U.S. sees a lot of heat stroke and heat related death among our farm laborers. This could have a direct impact there too. It's better for the farmers yeah it's better for the plants yep and it's better for the solar panels yep it's a win-win that's win. amazing so basically you know you get this argument sometimes it's not from the brightest people but they say oh well if you need all the solar panels where are we gonna put all yes so you just put it over farms which take up a huge amount of of land i mean right. the amount of farms in the united states would make your head spin we don't even need that anywhere close no, the amount of, of solar panel space. And to be clear, this isn't all crops. I mean, there are plenty of crops that need direct sun. These sure. are for certain crops like tomatoes where they don't need direct sun. Okay. But there is so much farmland. Yes. In just the United States alone. Yep. I mean, talk about the rest of the world. We're talking about a huge chunk of our planet's surface yep. area is devoted to growing plants yep. that we eat. And you're saying you just cover a tiny fraction of that with solar panels and the plants are going to do better and the solar is going to like it better. I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's amazing. Yeah. And that we only started studying this now. Right. <laughs> it seems like, did they, do they usually like put plywood up? It seems like plywood would do the same, would do the same job. Did they never think of doing that either to get two to three times the food production? I think there's a lot of things that humans haven't thought about until now. That's, I mean, it's just insane. The only reason we were going to put it out there is because it's basically plywood that gives you electricity. It's not wood, obviously, but it's it's the same shape, right? You know, And that's the whole reason we came up with... It's just... Wow! Speaking of solar, we told you about Tesla's latest solar offering a couple weeks ago, renting solar panels from Tesla. They'll come out and install solar on your roof for no upfront costs. You just pay as low as 50 bucks a month rental fee for a small 3.8 kilowatt system that produces an average of 9 to 12 kilowatt hours per day, and it will reduce your electric bill. Now, previously, Tesla said they would have charged $1,500 to remove the system from your roof. Well, now Tesla has updated the contract. They say system removal. If the system needs to be removed for any reason, such as your cancellation or for roof repairs, you agree to give Tesla reasonable access to your home to remove the system at Tesla's convenience and availability. Tesla will remove the system at no cost to you. Tesla or one of our subcontractors will patch and seal all roof penetrations associated with removal of the system. Tesla shall have no obligation to repair any ordinary wear and tear on the home or to provide any replacement parts. So it doesn't sound like it's going to be like a brand new spanking roof. They're going to just plug holes, right. but they'll come take it off for free. Before, there was this $1,500 removal fee. Now, yep. the only reason you'd need to remove the panels from your roof is pretty much just for roof repair right yep. it's not like they're gonna put them up and you're gonna be like oh i don't like i don't like the color you know you're gonna you're gonna be like oh we need to put a new roof on the house it's leaking right um we need to fix the roof of the house right. tesla please remove the solar panels right? right that's the that's the only reason you're gonna want to do it because right. you're not just gonna be like 
ah, I don't want to, I don't want to do that anymore because it's actually going to save you. It's going to make you more money than you're going to be renting them out to Tesla. Exactly. For. I mean, take a look at uh, Elon's latest tweet. Without the removal fee, Tesla Solar is unequivocally a guaranteed instant money printer, producing three hundred to a thousand dollars per year in after-tax income. You know, you pass all those signs on the side of the road that are like, "Hey, you want to make instant cash with no labor at all?" <laughs> Get rich quick. This is that. <laughs> this is that, except it actually uses power from the sun. And and it prints money. Right. It just, it, it just, there's just money coming out of the solar panels. <laughs> I mean, that's, it's just crazy. My only question here is, yeah, yeah. the SEC, they jump down Elon's throat every time he says something about Tesla. Here he said that it's an instant money printer. I think the SEC should probably contact him and go, mm, Mr. Musk, I don't think you should say that. <laughs> it's not an instant money printer. Uh, but maybe unequivocally <laughs> w protects him in some way by saying unequivocally. Uh, okay. No, nope, that that doesn't make no nope, <laughs> no nope. that logic doesn't carry <laughs> forth. Yeah, it's funny what the SEC wants to uh, attack him for. Yeah. Okay. Check out these tweets here on Tesla's upcoming version 10 software. Tesla owner Silicon Valley tweeted out to Elon, "Can we get the backup camera to save down on the Tesla cam?" And Elon said. Yep. Okay. Stop for a second. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, so let me just try and wrap my head around this. Yeah. Uh, the backup cam right now doesn't record anywhere. You can see it, but you can't record it. Yes. But now this will be in version 10. You'll be able to record what was on your backup cam. Now, we don't know if it's going to be in version 10 because he just said, yup. Okay. I guess I just thought it was in version 10 because uh, a minute later, um, Viv says, I'm feeling lucky too. And Elon said, both I'm feeling lucky and I'm feeling hungry buttons in version 10.0. I'm still not convinced that means feeling hungry. That doesn't, I don't make that face when I'm hungry. I'm hungry. That's a silly face. Oh. That's a, okay. ah, I'm feeling silly right? button. That's way, yeah. Okay. So that's going to be in version 10. <laughs> Let's see what else is going to be in version 10. Uh, this tweet from Brandon Bernicke said, how far along is version 10? Elon said, looking good. Smart summon is almost great. Drive in theater mode, karaoke, and cuphead are awesome. Okay. Uh, we have not heard about drive-in theater mode. What is that? Obviously, I don't know. Because oh, I thought you knew. Elon tweeted it out. <laughs> now, there's one, there's a couple ideas. That but you had be. talked about drive-in theater just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, Maybe that got into the, the like, the that's, ether. That's weird. I mean, that's weird. I don't well, know. If so, because you, you were Elon's talking about what show? you wanted was that if you back up to see the screen at a drive-in, right. that you wanted to be able to switch your left and right speakers. Because... Could then, that be this? Yeah, because if you're listening in stereo, which the car is in stereo, you know, if the ex if there's an explosion that like happens on this side of the screen, and the and the movie producer was like, I want uh, the explosion sound to come out of the left speakers when the explosion happens, and why they know it is on the left side, because all movie people are German. But then I'm looking, I'm facing the wrong way in yeah, the car. Yeah, we, we get it. It, it would that... explode on the right side, and I would go yeah. like, okay. So you think that's driving theater mode? It's either that or or he means that it's just movie mode on the screen. That's what I think it is. Okay. Okay. Um, but then this next one, Anna Bonilla says, still a week out for EAP wide release. And Elon said, merging code branches and one more QA level release this week. Hopefully EAP wide release week after. Mm -hmm. So I got really excited when I read this because I'm like, enhanced autopilot is coming out in two weeks. Right. So tell me again, what's an enhanced autopilot? Because no. I can't remember. Uh, okay. So <laughs> he didn't mean enhanced autopilot. No, he did. He said EAP, enhanced right. autopilot. Or early access program. Oh, so that changes it. Somewhere. Elon, you're not following your own guidelines of like how to communicate with people. Don't use acronyms, right? That was in your guidelines that you came up with, Elon, right? Because it's confusing, especially when you have EAP, like... Oh, I'm getting EAP for my EAP. No no one knows what the hell you're talking about. Are you still going to speak to him like this when you're VP of Special Operations? I think I think that <laughs> in a jokey <laughs> manner, it's a very <laughs> okay, well <laughs> communicated way. Okay. I don't know. All right, so let me read so that means reading it that way, that means that in 2 weeks all this stuff is coming out to early access program wide release because there's kind of like two levels of early access, I guess. Right. But this is still exciting because that means that version 10 is 
on the verge. And he does say that most of the stuff is looking good and that smart summon is almost great. For yes. a while there, he was saying it it really sucked. So yes. we've gone pretty quickly to the almost great category. Yep. I'm really excited about this. So a lot of good stuff coming for version 10. Oh, and there's one more thing for version 10. I almost forgot. This tweet from Ivan says, will it include smart auto park at initial V10 release? And Elon said, no, probably V10.1. Now what's smart auto park again? So I think it's probably going to be like enhanced auto summon, except in reverse. And you might be saying, well, then why don't they just do it in reverse? It's because it's a little more complicated than that, right? Why is it more the complicated? The idea would be that you would drive up to wherever you were going, movie theater, whatever. Um, you'd get out of the car and then you'd say, car, go find a parking space. Or, or you do it in your app. <laughs> you wouldn't do it like this? <laughs> I would do it, but it wouldn't work. Um, and then the car would go off and it would park, find itself a parking Oh, and that's space harder and to do because it actually has to park itself. Right. I see. Because yes. with Smart Summon, it just leaves the parking spot and just makes a beeline for you and it tries to avoid everything in the way. Okay. And that's coming out probably in version 10.1. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. It's now time for the state of the channel. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jesse and I have prided ourselves on trying to read and respond to each and every email and social media message since we started this channel over three years ago. We really love engaging with our fantastic Now You Know community of people who care about our planet. But unfortunately, the amount of daily correspondence has steadily increased to the point now where Jesse and I can no longer keep up. So imagine getting more emails at your job than you can answer in a day. That's, that's where we are right now. Yeah, we just can't keep up and we're not complaining, but it's not fair to anybody. I mean, I find myself spending about 20 minutes, let's say, to read a news story that somebody sends me and then writing a response. And in that time, two more messages come in. So we're getting so many messages that we're basically overwhelmed and often feeling depressed that we can't give everyone a meaningful amount of time. We still want to correspond with you, but we're going to have to change the way we do it. So starting today, we're asking that if you want to correspond with us, that you join our Patreon at any level that you wish. You might be asking, why Patreon? It puts all the correspondence for us in one place. No longer do we have to hunt through Facebook, email, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and there's a couple other ways to contact us, which I don't even know how to like respond to. It does away with all that, Everything will be in one place so that Zach and I can see all of it. We look forward to hearing from you. Questions, comments, advice, positivity. We love that. And especially stories. Stories that we wouldn't have heard about otherwise. Stories that are important and impactful. Stories about you. And things that you've learned. We think it's better to actually have a way to reach us rather than us fall behind and lose track of conversations and stop conversing at all. We both look forward to hearing from you and we appreciate your support. So head on over to Patreon. You can join at any level. We got lots of cool perks over there and know that you're supporting us by joining. Right, and for those of you who already are patrons, and I know that there are a lot of you, um, send us a message on Patreon. We'd love to talk to you. All right, it's time for the lightning round. So a new patent application by Tesla reveals a new electromagnetic windshield wiper design. Wow, it's using electromagnets to shoot the water off of your windshield? No, it Some looks kind of... It looks simpler than that. Space laser technology? I was hoping that's what it was, but look at it. I have a question. What the heck have the big automakers been doing all these years? Like th uh, something like this, making a better windshield wiper, isn't that something that maybe one of your goals when you're at Ford, you'd be like, okay, our goal this year is to come up with a better windshield wiper. That's, anyone, anyone want to take it on? Steve, that's, Bob, that's Jeffrey? Ne that's not their goal. Th there was never, no one was like, oh, I think we could do uh, make a better windshield wiper. Shut up. <laughs> you're fired. Get out of here. That's a stupid idea. They probably we need was, to sell more cars. There probably was a guy that wanted to do that. Right. right. He's probably working for Tesla. Yeah, now. exactly. Revolt is India's first electric motorcycle manufacturer. Yep, they're offering the RV300 and the RV400. Now check this out. You can get on an RV300 for as little as 42 bucks a month with zero dollars down. Wow. That's like less than I pay in electricity for my car. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's cheap because yeah. that's, you know quarter of what i would pay for gas now it's got a range of 80 kilometers or 50 miles now if you want to move up to the rv 400 you get a bigger range 97 miles 156 kilometers the warranty is unlimited lifetime warranty for the battery cool also the battery's cool because it comes out like a little suitcase that you can carry into work and charge up so you're charging it like your phone uh the service is the first three years of service are free and uh the only thing i don't like about this is this it is a sound 
They yeah. put a sound. They put on multiple. An you can choose different sounds that you want your bike to sound like. And my question is, uh-huh. if you're going to pick crappy ice sounds, why not pick any sound? If, if your bike can sound like anything, why would you pick the old? You're, you're trying to move away. You're trying to revolt from ice. Why don't you put like birds chirping as you drive by? Right or like, a tiger? Like, yeah. Rawr! Yeah. That's and everyone's a- like, holy crap! <laughs> whoa! Better get out of the way of that guy. He's riding a tiger. I mean. Think how cool that could be. The French ultra capacitor startup Nawa has just raised $10 million additionally, and they will start to mass produce 100,000 cells a month of its latest ultra capacitors in the next 12 months. One of the cars it'll be going into is the new Lamborghini Sion. Now, more of that's coming up on the Patreon bonus story. Mm -hmm. These ultra caps can fully charge in less than 20 seconds. So they can take a huge charge from like braking and then they can give it back quickly. Also, they're awesome at things like accelerating up a hill because if you need that energy back quickly, they can give it to you. So, okay. um, so what's the catch? Well, they're only a quarter of the energy density of lithium ion. Okay. And they only hold a charge for less than a week. Okay, but I mean, that's not But so there's a big bad. plus here. Oh yeah. They last for millions of charge cycles and they work great in all temperatures. Ooh. Yeah, so lots of huge benefits here. Now, NAWA says that the global ultra capacitor market is about $560 million right now, but is projected to grow between 400 and 600% in the next five years. Right, and I'd believe that because if you put ultra capacitors in your car, and I think we've talked about this before, but basically what you could do is practically all of the braking could be done with the electric motor. Right. Because there's only so much energy you're going to need to slow down the car to zero. And usually the batteries can only take so much energy to be charged at, right? Right. If you have an ultra capacitor that can take a ton of energy, exactly, you can just use the motor to slow down the car. Now you might be saying, but that's regen braking. It is regen braking, but you could do it at an even higher uh, degree of deceleration. Exactly, because you know how in the winter, uh, you know, if a Tesla's battery is too cold, it can't even take the energy. So therefore, you're just using your regular brakes to right. stop the car. So that means you're, you know, Tesla's already hardly ever used the brake pads. You are going to basically never need the brake pads. The brake yeah. pads are just there as an emergency to stop the car. Yeah. Right? If if the if a EMP goes off or something like that. With the acceleration, you can dump all of that energy from the ultra capacitor straight into the wheels. That means that the battery doesn't have to do all that work, which means that you don't have to charge the battery like as many times, which is less cycle wear for the battery. Exactly. Battery is happier. Your car is amazing. That's a win, win, win. So guess what the third best-selling car in the United Kingdom was this August? Okay, United Kingdom. Uh, The Mini Cooper. Nope. Uh, the London taxi cab that you can buy those, right? Uh, yep, but nope. Uh, it wasn't the. It wasn't that. Okay, it, think uh, electric. Think ooh, electric. Okay, uh, starts uh, with the T. Double, si- uh, triple decker. No, no, but the, uh, the company starts with a T. Uh, ends in an A. Tis. I don't know. What is it? A British car? It's sold in England. It's other. Uh, wait, you just said it started with a T and ended with an A. <laughs> that. What a terrible hint. Well, it, it is actually Tesla, but they're calling it other. See, this chart is made by the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders, SSMT. Um, and I guess they didn't want to tell you the fact that the Model 3 made up three quarters of all BEV sales in the UK in August. The sales are up 377% since last year, all because of other, aka Model 3. Usually when you do other on mm-hmm. a chart, right? It's like the big thing, the second thing, the third thing, the fourth thing. Other. Right. And other is like 1.2% of whatever it is. You know, you're like, yeah. we got solar, we got wind, we got bio, and we got other. And you're like, yeah. what is that other? It's, what? it's you know, a guy on a bicycle. It makes no sense why you would call that other. It's a, it's a brand. It's a company. Just put it down. Why, why, why are you hiding it? Like, <laughs> it's uh, something else. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Above Ford Focus, what is that? <laughs> It's other. It's something <laughs> other than, than the rest of the things on the chart. Very good. Now, moving on. <laughs> Remember when we reported on Tesla starting its own auto insurance company in California yes. a couple weeks ago? We said we would be surprised if it didn't start using driver data soon. Guess what? Uh, what? Now, a Tesla executive has said that's exactly what they'll start doing soon. The head of Tesla's insurance program, Matt Edmonds, said that Tesla plans to use direct driver data where it can with permission from owners, saying the data is there. It's all there. Cameras in and all around your car. All of the data points are there. It really comes down to case law and how much of the data we can utilize. It would have to be a state by state proposition. Do you notice that he said cameras in and around the car? In and around the car. So if you're an attentive driver. But I mean, 
They're talking about that camera that's pointing right, right at so, you. Right. So if you're if you're usually texting, they will know. That's awesome. So this is it's awesome for really good drivers. Yes. Do you know who it's not so awesome for? Uh, give really me a bad drivers. Yes. Yes. I was going to say that. That's. They're like, oh no, I guess I can't use Tesla insurance because. You or shouldn't maybe, be driving. Or maybe I mean, they have to change their ways. <laughs> Tesla has access to more driver data than any other insurer. I finally have something good to say about Volkswagen. Uh, what? Check this out. Volkswagen will be unveiling a prototype of the classic Beetle now as a fully electric conversion. Volkswagen say they could fit 36.8 kilowatt hours of lithium ion battery packs into the underbody of the car, giving it a range of 200 kilometers. It'll have a zero to 80 kilometers an hour in over eight seconds. Um, it'll have fast charging. And Thomas Schmall, who serves as a member of the board of management of Volkswagen Group Components, says, we are already working together to prepare the platform for the bus. An e-Porsche 356 could also be pursued in the future. This is this is by and large very smart and i would urge volkswagen to because they listen to us <laughs> i would i would urge them to make as many of these as possible because they would yeah. be extraordinarily p popular exactly everyone everyone loves everyone loves the design of the original volkswagen beetle yeah um and the microbus and, and, and you make it electric exactly. and suddenly it's much harder to have a diesel scandal <laughs> if you, you don't go. have a diesel engine in there there you go wouldn't put it past them though but you know maybe so according to tesla's career page they are looking for manufacturing technicians in cell manufacturing at fremont which states tesla is currently seeking a technician for a manufacturing line we are developing you'll be part of a new product line we are developing now why are they doing this at Fremont and not at Gigafactory is my first question. My second question is, why are they doing this at all? Don't they have uh, Panasonic to do it? I think it might be to keep this new cell manufacturing line away from Panasonic. Why? It could be uh, these million mile batteries. Oh. So, I mean, it could be that they want to be closer to JB and Elon Maxwell. and everyone. Right. You don't want these at, way out in the desert where you, yeah. you know, have to go drive fly to see them or something you want gotcha. them right at fremont um, oh so you develop the technology at fremont then when you've perfected it you move it to the gigafactory right. once your contract with panasonic is You're over like, get out of there gotcha. right so a new order signed by interior secretary david bernhardt has reclassified electric bikes as non-motorized bicycles on national parkland so e-bikes used to be lumped in with dirt bikes, motorcycles, and other gas-powered vehicles, which meant that it was very hard to ride them in national parks because people would be like, that's a motorized vehicle! Get that out of here! The this needs to be serene! And I don't blame those people because I don't want dirt bikes, you know, rip-roaring through my, right. my peaceful national park. Uh, but now they are no longer classified as those vehicles. Yeah, e-bikes are classified into three classes. Class one can reach speeds up to 20 miles an hour, 32 kilometers an hour, but require pedals to engage the motor. Class two, same speed limits, but have an additional throttle. So that means you don't need to pedal. Right. Class three, same as class two, but higher speeds up to 28 miles an hour. So now all three classes of e-bikes can be ridden on any cycling trails, just not allowed to use the throttle. Don't know how they're going to police that. But it doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't sure. matter if you're using the throttle or if you're biking because it's going to be silent. All of these electric bikes yep. are quiet. They are all clean. They do not yep. pollute, right? They are not these loud dirt bikes. And I think it's finally time that we separate. Just because it has a motor doesn't mean that it is a motor vehicle when right. they wrote the law. When they wrote exactly. the law, no one had an electric bike. No one was going to be like, hey, wait a minute, guys. Before you say motor vehicle... I have this electric bike. Let me show you. Like, that didn't exist, no. right? They just knew about dirt bikes, and they were like, we do not want these on national parks. Gotcha. So researchers have studied 17 languages and found that even though some languages like Italian have a higher number of syllables per second, nine, versus, say, German, six, they all average the same bits per second. They all come in at 39 bits per second of information that is spoken. Um, so compare this to the average home internet connection of 100 million bits per second. So to give you some scale of that, right, it would take one one thousandth of a second to transmit the words in this show if you were a computer. That's about 100 million times faster. So then we could have a much longer show and, and people wouldn't complain about it being too long. Yeah, I know. A show could be maybe two one thousandths of a second right. long and uh, people wouldn't care. It'd be like... 
Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Elon tweeted about this this week. He tweeted after he read this article, he said, a Neuralink could increase this by several orders of magnitude. Orders of magnitude being zeros that you add to the end of the number. Right. So one order of magnitude would be 10 times. So let's just say all the Neuralink could do is make it 10 times. That means instead of 39 bits per second, you could put out 10 times that 390 bits per right. second. So it'd be like auctioneer. It'd be like speaking. And that was the end of the show, right? You know, it could be that. And that's just one order of magnitude. He said several. And that how crazy would that be? Because think about this. Think about school, right? How long do you have to be in school for? A long time. Why? Because you have to, you know, uh, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492, right? It could just be like, boop. Oh, I know that fact now. Yeah, Great. It's in, there. it's in there. All right. It's time for video contributor stories. What do we got this week, Jess? We have a Father's Day car show. This was back uh, from June of this year. Arvada, Colorado. We're at the Impex Father's Day car show and we haven't found any electric cars. We were thinking about we have to get electric cars in front of people that don't know about them. We can't just keep going to these electric car shows and continue to see the same people over and over that already get it. Our Chevy Bolt. And it's the only electric car that has been in this show in the past 35 years. Where are the Teslas? Bring the cars to the car shows where people can see them. That's very important. We have to start putting electric vehicles in front of people that drive ICE cars so that we can explain the difference which you have always done on your show. Do you have your favorite car that you like? Uh, well, you know, I, I gotta say, the electric vehicle, has, you know, having that be a first, you know, we've done this for over a decade, and having our first electric vehicle is pretty exciting. Uh, the, I would say that uh, the audience has been a buzz. <laughs> That's a really good point they brought up. Why not bring the electric cars to car shows where people who need to see them are going to? I mean, I love EV car shows, don't get me wrong. But yeah, there's all these people that go to these shows over and over and never seen an EV before. Pull up in your EV and then scare them with the front frunk. Just open it up and be like, right. Where's the engine? And, and we've done Where's this before. We've gone to a car show. You know, the, the Model X with the doors attracted more people at that car show than any other car. Yeah. A at lot the show. of Thunderbird owners were like, get out this of here. This sucks. You ruined my business. <laughs> All right. It's time for our Patreon bonus story. So if you'd like to head over there now and support us for as little as a buck a month, you can see all of our Patreon bonus stories, including what we're going to do right now, which is a whole bunch of cool news that we can't bring you on the rest of the show. Right. So it's just $1 a month, and there's four Patreon bonus stories per month. So it's only a quarter to watch this. Hey everybody, we're back from the Patreon bonus stories and it's time for our Patreon shout outs. Who do we got, Jess? We have the Frosty Truth. Scott W. Miller. We have Jonathan Shakespeare. Jorge Berrios Colon. Deborah Lee Bradley. Rick DeLott. Jacob Gruber. And Addie Williams. I almost screwed up the last one, but I didn't. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice try, Addy Williams. It's time for Elon's tweets of the week. We are testing Tesla at Nerdbring. <laughs> no, it's Nerd Burger Ring. Oh, right, because it's a burger. Nerd Burger Ring. Ring. Yeah. This is our first attempt. What do you think, Jesse? Vincent says, Hi, Elon. Any chance to have the pickup truck unveiling event before the end of October? Need to schedule my next business trip and don't want to miss the exciting event. Thank you, Elon said. November, most likely. You know what else is in November? 
Thanksgiving. <laughs> you ask, what, what else was in November? The LA Auto Show. Oh, yeah. Which yes. we're going to. So, I don't know. Could, could they there. reveal it there? Or? Watch them unveil it in, in Sparks, Nevada. We're just going to be like, no! <laughs> so then Elon said, um, Porsche, this word turbo does not mean what you think it does. And Jalopnik said, um, Elon Musk, this word autopilot does not mean what you think it does. And Elon said, Jalopnik, not sharpest tool in shed. <laughs> Which is a double joke because he's both insulting jalopnik and he's making a shrek reference oh from the the song well well, from all star which was in shrek which is why it's so popular the smash mouth song smash mouth not the top um and then elon said also cars are called automobiles don't know what he's talking about there exactly but yeah twitter's bad yeah i hate twitter all right, and then this diesel smackdown. Tesla said, can we all just agree that pumping out carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, particulate matter, nitrogen oxide, and sulfur dioxide from cars on all the streets around the world is maybe a bad idea? And Elon said. "In and That was by, by Tesla, by the way. Yeah. And Elon said, in close traffic, poisonous gas spewing from the car in front of you goes straight into your AC intake. Good thing gas slash diesel car makers didn't cheat on their emissions or we'd be in real trouble. Which is hilarious and terrifying <laughs> and sad which is what that emoji is and i would want the terrifying hilarious sad it's emoji pretty yes, it applicable i would point out that uh all tesla cars are have really good air filters yes model x you can get it with Best. a hepa filter yeah which filters out pm 2.5 particles yeah. and the model 3 if you have it in recirculate has amazing air quality in the inside of the car yep just Take- a little just a little plug for tesla <laughs> in case you're thinking of buying a car we don't do that often. All right, it's time for community mail time. Community mail time. Our friend Somi writes to us to let us know that there is a provincial car insurance company in British Columbia, ICBC, that is now giving a 10% discount for cars with autonomous emergency braking. Guess what cars have that? Teslas do. Oh, right. I mean, other cars do too as well. We'll yes. put the link in the show notes uh, if you want to try and get a little bit cheaper car insurance. And Andrew's kids see a Model 3. Check out this video. This is video from our friend Andrew. And he said, love your show, guys. Keep up the great work. You're an inspiration to many. We've been waiting for Model 3s to arrive in Australia for over two years, and my kids are absolutely obsessed with it. Likely, our long wait is almost over as Model 3s are finally starting to get delivered here, and ours is on the way, too. Check out his kids' reactions when they see a Model 3. (laughs) That's like that's like a... It's Santa! (laughs) He's here at the mall! (laughs) Um, Mike wrote to us from Arkansas to tell us about the opening of Ozark Electric Cooperative's new 11 megawatt and 26 megawatt hour solar battery farm with Samsung Batteries in Fayetteville, Arkansas, that will power both of the city's wastewater treatment plants, which are the city's largest electric consumers and more. This will save the city roughly $200,000 per year. Wow, so you're growing green and you're saving money. Yep, and then Matt in Canada saw this right after our Magic School Bus episode. Which, by the way, was not... If you hadn't watched it because you thought it was about Magic School Bus, go watch it. It's not about... It's not it's about Miss Frizzle? Not about Miss Frizzle. Oh, or bummer. Or Liz or Carlos. It's not that, but you should you should watch it. It's good. Now for our on-air question of the week. Uh, this is where we answer your questions from Patreon. And uh, what do we got this week? Uh, This one is from John. He said, I would find it interesting to see how many law enforcement vehicles are being replaced by EVs and what the vehicle users think of this new technology and why they like or dislike it. Now, to answer that question, John, I think we actually bring you every known law enforcement uh, department that we can find in the world that is changing over to EVs. So, I mean, there's been relatively few. You might be thinking, well, it must be hundreds. Yeah, you would think that. It makes sense. But you can, we, as soon as we find them, we tell you about them. Right. We can basically count them like on our combined hands. Right. There's, there's not a lot. Um, when we start to get like statistics and numbers, we're also going to be showing those on the show because yep. that'll be exciting. But I mean, from what we've heard from most of the police officers is that they like it a lot. Right. Tell your police officers <laughs> yeah, about no, Teslas. If you got your police department to buy a Tesla, you would be significantly increasing the number of Tesla police cars in the world. Yeah. And if you're watching and you are a police officer... Like like, tell your fellow police officers and your police chiefs about this because this is going to save money. All right, it's time for the results from our Patreon poll. We asked, do you think that Tesla's pickup truck will actually get unveiled in November? And people said, yes, Elon will be on time this time. And they, uh, 103 people said that. And 66 people said, nah, it's going to take a little bit longer, but it'll be worth it. So, I mean, <laughs> yes, it will be on time. He said the end of the summer. 
which is originally, but like, now now he's saying November yeah. likely. So okay, November so likely. He's not. He's not on time. November likely. Yeah, but they didn't have any other options. So all right, it's time for supercharger reviews and destination charger reviews. Now remember that you guys can go out and film those for us, and you're doing a great job. We're filling up this map of ours with these reviews. Hi, Zach and Jesse. I'm at the Marston, Wisconsin supercharger. It's at a Culver's. And these also have these funky, nice labeled red bays, which is awesome. And it has one, two, three, four, five, seven or eight stalls. And it's at the back of the parking lot. That's about it. Now you know. Hey, Zach and Jesse. Stacy and Steve Rose here. We're at the Christopher Place Resort in Newport, Tennessee. Destination Charger. Obviously a great place to come get your Tesla. Um, the owners are great. The resort is great. We have tennis court and a pool. There's hiking available um, on their property. And I think it's a great place for people to come. Thanks so much. Back to you. Hey, what's up, Zach and Jesse? Here at the Spring Hill Suites by Marriott at a destination charger that's actually in the basement of this parking garage here. So you need to check into the hotel first before you try to use it. Um, it's down in the basement. But as you can see here in the video, I went down there and it didn't have the typical green light that you see on the Tesla wall connectors. So it looks like the station was actually off. Good thing is they actually had another EV charger down there, a uh, different brand, and that looked like it was working properly. Typically, the wall charger is gonna have that green light on it, uh, letting you know that it's working properly. Overall, if this station is working properly, or if you wanna plug in anyway, they do have another um, charger that you can use while you're staying here at the hotel. But it is kind of across the street from a pretty big shopping center with some restaurants. So I'd probably give this a seven or eight out of 10. Hi. Zach and Jesse, this is Bill Fitzgerald. My wife and I just stepped off a Viking cruise ship in Eidford, Norway. It's the queen of the fjords. There's only two roads in, and I think there's only one road out. There's restaurants and shopping and eight charging stations here for your Tesla. I don't have mine. There's one behind us charging right now. It looks like a Model S. Uh, they have charging for both Model 3s and uh, the old style charging. There's even a couple of commercial chargers available here. It's a great little place to walk around and plenty of shopping. We give this a 9.5. This is a wonderful stop. Now you know. That's fantastic. Love it. Now there's, there's only one new supercharger going online this week. What is it? It is number 273 in China, number 1,620 in the world, it is the 20 stall in Hong Kong at the Ma Lui Shui in China. Now, I checked because I wanted to see, I wanted some positive information here. Yeah. Uh, there's 93 more superchargers under construction all around the world, and 91 are permitted. So yes. that's over 180 ready to go online fairly soon. Many of the ones under construction are for the Trans Canadian yeah. Supercharger Network, um, which, if you're Canadian, is super exciting. Um, because I don't know how many how many Canadians have seen Saskatchewan. No. I, I know that I haven't, but no. I'm also not Canadian. Now, we want to show you a past video because we've done like over 800 videos now. And uh, some of them right. were so early on, they weren't seen much. We want to pick out some of the ones that maybe didn't get, you know, the as many views as we thought they deserved. But they're important. So this one is how to really recycle plastic number five. You should go check it out because plastic number five is a super valuable plastic, but usually it's just thrown out and incinerated or put in the landfill because they don't know how to deal with it. So check out this video and you'll learn about that. It's called polypropylene, by the way. Polypropylene. And now it's time for the Patreon giveaway. It's the Patreon giveaway. All right, so we're giving away an EcoWare t-shirt. Uh, if you want to get your name in this bin of fun that Jesse is spinning right now, you just have to become a Patreon. And if uh, for 
whatever you support us at, we'll put that many uh, cards in here. Who's our winner this week, Jesse? Who's going to win an EcoWare t-shirt? We've got Nick Cedar. Nick Cedar, you are the winner of an EcoWare t-shirt of your choice. Uh, don't forget, we offset the carbon for the life cycle of that product, and we plant a tree for every tea. And you made it to the end of the show. And uh, what I want to talk about is that what you're seeing right now, these names at the end, you're saying, oh, why, yes. why are some of them gold? Oh, why are some of them gold, Jesse? These, that's because these people have supported this channel for over a hundred dollars and they deserve special treatment. Yeah. I mean, I was going through the list the other day and Jesse and I were like, some of these people, they give a lot of these people give a lot of money to help the show. And like, how can we give a little extra special thanks? And so we were like, yeah, gold would be good. So yeah, you're seeing all these gold names. Those are people who really, thank you. You guys have been thank here with so us for a while. Yeah. You've been supporting us. You make this show possible. So can't thank you enough. Right. It, it really, like the energy, if you're seeing any energy at all coming out of us today, it's because when we're doing the show, we're like, there's so many awesome people that we want to make sure we do a, a, as good a show as we can for. Yes. And, you know, we wouldn't do this show if it weren't for these patrons. If these people didn't exist, we wouldn't do the show. Like, if we had come out with Tesla Time News and we had gotten to probably episode 10 and, you know, people were just like, whatever, not going to subscribe to your channel, not going to support you in any way, um, we would probably be, like, thinking about giving up. And probably, yeah. and, but we're very stubborn. So probably by about episode 50 well and you patrons know because you watch the patreon bonus stories what jesse's what field he would have gone yeah, into right no absolutely yeah. i mean if you which surprised me actually but i'll, I'll well. say no more <laughs> yeah well, you know, it's not that surprising <laughs> really think about it but <laughs> um yeah and the patreons will know that what that joke is so yeah. it's a special joke for you um keep in mind that we are we've stopped we've given up on answering all of our facebook and emails that you guys sent to us just because it's it's been too much and yeah. we really appreciate the, the the wanting to reach out to us and stuff and we really do want to get back to you um but we can't promise to to answer everyone well and, and it's, it's just, just it's cut into showtime like we need yeah. a lot of hours during the week to prepare for the show and to write it and so forth and it's just like we can't keep up and i know it's a good problem to have i suppose but like it's never happened to us before um I guess you kind of hear about this with other celebrity kind of people like, oh, I, I just don't have time for my fans. Um, we do want to have time. It's just we got to we we figure this way. Maybe we will have time to actually respond to as many people as possible. Yep. So thank you so much for supporting us. If you're a Patreon, thank you so much for watching. Um, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. It'll make your life easier. Like it's it's cool for us because we add one more. Haha, <laughs> we can, you know, oh, we want to review your electric bike or we want to interview you CEO yeah. of company who makes cool product or wants to change the world. And they go, Oh, you have 140,000 subscribers. Yeah. I'll do an interview with you. And then we get to show it to you. Um, but it makes it easier for you because if you log into youtube.com, um, where <laughs> it will show you the things that you're subscribed to and it'll, it'll learn based on what you watch what you want to see that's true your ads will actually start changing too because it'll start to know that right. you like certain kinds of things so you won't unfortunately you know, the, the, the ad algorithm is so smart it's like oh you like car here car you <laughs> want car i show car here's the car for you it's the Ford it gets better it, it, it learns <laughs> it learns um so <laughs> you can teach it you could you yeah right but anyway yeah. Please subscribe. And if you hit the bell button, then you'll get actual notifications about it, like on your phone or on your email, however you like to live your life. Um, yeah, because you can actually get emails directly t sent to your inbox to let you know that there's a new episode and you can watch it right from there. You don't have to log into YouTube all the time because that can That's be a good point. That can be annoying. But hey, we're here every Monday and Tuesday and Friday. So, you know, we're always <laughs> well, around. Well, you know, <laughs> pretty much all the we're time. We're here all week, folks. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Now you know. know.